Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to Yoda Programming using Scala. In this uh, video, we're starting our new chapter on priority queues. Now the priority queue is an ADT that, at least as far as the methods that are on it, looks exactly like a regular queue. But we change the, um, the nature of the methods. So if we were to pull up our code that we've written previously, and let's open back up the my queue. So my queue has an in queue and a d queue which add and remove and is empty in a peak. And it's supposed to remove the thing that has been on the queue for longest. Remember the queue is supposed to work like you're getting in line to be serviced someplace. Okay, well, the priority queue is not quite the same. It's going to have the same operations. We'll go ahead and we'll create a trait for it. And I'll call it my priority queue. And it takes a type argument. <clears throat> and I'm actually just going to copy over these methods. Okay. Because it turns out that the set of methods is identical. What's different is how we are going to implement them because and, and in some ways the contract for them. Whereas a queue always gives you the thing that's been there the longest, the priority queue gives you the thing with the highest priority. Okay? And depending upon your application, that can mean different things. Uh, talk about a, a queue being getting in line to, to get food at, at some place. A priority queue would be you've gone to the emergency room. Okay? Emergency rooms run through a process called triage. And basically they assess how uh, the condition of a patient and how much they need to be seen, how quickly they, they need to be seen. If you go into an emergency room with you know, a paper cut, you're going to sit there for a very, very, very long time because everyone who comes in otherwise, you know, the, the, all the car wrecks, all the uh, gunshot wounds, all of the chest pains are going to go in front of you. In fact, your paper cut, you might not ever get seen. Basically, the place is going to have to be empty because your priority is so remarkably low in that case. Um, so the DQ gives you, in a priority queue, the highest priority element. And so the question is, the next question is then, how can we implement this? Well, just like with the queue, we implemented our queue in two ways. We did it using an array and we did it using a linked list. Using our priority queue, we can do the same. In fact, we have even more options here. We can implement them using the array or the linked list, and then we can choose to sort those data structures or to not sort those data structures. And the one that I want to write for you in this video is, or in, in the next video, is I want to write a priority queue that uses a sorted linked list. Now, to want to briefly go over why that is. So for the, the queue in the stack, we had this requirement that everything needed to be order one. We relaxed that when we went to our list because we basically said, you can't do that. It's impossible to have a list ADT where everything is order one. Well, it turns out we can't do this for a priority queue either. Okay? We cannot be order one. So some of these are going to be order one. And for now, some of them are going to be order in. Now later on in the book, we're going to see a, a different way that we can implement a priority queue using something called a heap, and then we can improve this from order in to order log in. But for now, using either lists, linked lists or arrays, we're stuck with some of them are going to be order one and some of them are going to be order in. And so which operations are which depends upon what we do. One possibility is that we uh, don't sort our values. So for example, when we add in, this just adds into the first available slot. Okay? That's fast if we are one non-sorted. The DQ, well, if we did that, then this has to be order in for non-sorted. And the reason is because we would have to go through and look at all of the items and then figure out which ones uh, which one had the lowest priority. Turns out we'd have to do the same thing for peak as well. Is empty, 
hopefully any reasonable implementation that we would make is going to be order one. What about if we sort things? Well, if we sort things, then it turns out that enqueuing now becomes the order in operation because I have to find the correct place to put the new element that's been added in. However, if I keep it sorted, DQ can be written so that it is order one. And the peak can also be written so that it is order one. The is empty, well, as I said, should be order one no matter what. So the real question is, well, which do, in some ways, which do you do more, NQ or DQ? For any real application, probably everything that gets NQ'd gets DQ'd. So the only difference here is a, is a coefficient, uh, a constant that's multiplied by it. And it turns out that this will be something like an N over two, uh, or sorry, when you do this, you get the, for NQing, uh, you get to do things as an N over two because the, when you add things in a sorted uh, list or array, you only have to walk about halfway through it before you find the, the place to put it. Whereas this always has to go all the way through to find the thing that's, that's smallest. The real reason for doing the sorted is because of the peak here, because you can actually call peak many more times than potentially either one of these, depending upon your application. And so I wanna have a fast peak. So we're gonna write this using a sorted, and we're actually gonna write it using a sorted linked list. It's a good exercise for the viewer to write there uh, this again using a, an array, either a sorted array or an unsorted array, or with an unsorted linked list. I'll come back in the next video and we'll do our implementation.